Hello everybody, welcome back to the Punk Rock Player One channel and today I have something a little different for this channel for you guys. We are going to review Deadpool and Wolverine by Marvel Studios that released a few days ago and I went to see it Thursday night and before we get to anything this is going to be a spoiler review so if you do not want to get spoiled uh, click off this video <laughs> uh, but if you don't mind getting spoiled uh, or if you've seen it already uh, please continue to watch it because we will be getting into spoilers so three two one okay so I had pretty high expectations going into this movie knowing that especially knowing that apparently Ryan Reynolds had huge impact on this movie and he was one of the writers I believe for this movie in particular and uh yeah knowing that he had his hand in this I my expectations were high so the first I'd say the the first opening crawl where it leads to the credits was amazing it was uh hilarious it had a uh, deadpool um facing tva agents from the loki series uh just completely annihilating them with a weapon that we would find out later and it was absolutely hilarious because it was playing to the the song uh, by in sync, bye bye bye, and <laughs> he was break dancing in between, uh, killing all of the TVA agents, <laughs> and it was hilarious. Uh, if you've been a fan of the past two movies, and if you're a fan of Deadpool in general from the comics and video games and wherever you've seen them or been introduced to them, uh, in my opinion, uh, that scene at the beginning very much shows just peak Deadpool. Uh, it was absolutely hilarious. Um, I was bursting out laughing already, like within 30 seconds of the movie starting. And th this movie is extremely self-referential. Uh, he, <laughs> Deadpool's constantly poking fun at Disney and the MCU and uh, just really uh, <laughs> fooling on him basically just just making fun of him completely and uh we'll get into it later but he says some stuff <laughs> directly almost like to the crowd about mcu movies and it's just so relatable for me so to give you a little background of what how i feel about the mcu in its current state i feel that ever since avengers endgame uh MCU, the MCU has suffered extremely and there's been a few bright spots and I still need to, this is, this tells you how bad I've kind of tuned out of the MCU. I haven't even seen guardians of the galaxy three yet. And I heard that movie's good. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how I'm feeling about the MCU. Uh, I've seen, I haven't seen Eternals. I probably won't. <laughs> Um, I have seen Shang-Chi. I felt indifferent about Shang-Chi. I, it did not seem anything special, to be honest. And I haven't seen Ant-Man Quantumania, but, uh, my brother has, and he said it was terrible. So I believe him. And I, I saw all the information about Ant-Man Quantumania and it seemed pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. But I think eventually I'll watch all of those movies just so I can have a better formulated opinion about it. But before this, with all the other phases, I've watched every single Marvel movie, every single TV series ever, you know. And I'm not a huge comic book knowledge person. So if... Uh, People hit me up in the comments. Hey, you missed this. Uh, I am not a comic book aficionado. Uh, I do like some of the comics that I've read, of the few I've read. Uh, but uh, I have a good general knowledge of what should be adhered to in movies. And what 
they're missing from the comics. And when I mean the comics, I mean the, you know, the classic stories that just haven't been told yet for some reason. Like for Spider-Man, Spider-Man keeps facing the same three villains that he's been facing in the movies for 20 years. And uh, there's plenty more classic Spider-Man stories that we haven't even tapped into yet. So that's one example, but that's a microcosm because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. So how this movie stacks up to the rest of the MCU, uh, I will discuss in a couple minutes, but just to give you an idea of what happens next. So uh, Deadpool meets Wolverine and it's actually caused by the TVA. So the TVA was in the Loki series. And I have seen uh, most of Loki season one, except for the last episode. And I watched like 10 minutes of the last episode. And I just turned the TV off. And I haven't uh, went back to watch that last episode of Loki. So that kind of tells you how I feel about that. But yeah, MCU in general. I think has gone extremely downhill since Endgame. My favorite MCU movies, like top three, I would say before this movie came out, was Infinity War. Uh, I'll go ahead and say Spider-Man No Way Home, because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. And the third would have to be i'm gonna i'm gonna change what i said third place goes to avengers one so those are my top three uh, mcu movies and i'd say number four is like captain america winter soldier I, I might do a tier list in a future youtube video but back to the topic so we are introduced to the tva from loki season one and Deadpool uh, is basically just trying to live his normal life. He's put away the fact that he is a merc with a mouth. He's being a car salesman with Peter from the previous movie. And uh, he's just kind of out of luck. Like he even broke up with his girlfriend. So, but because of the events of the last movie with his time traveling, the TVA has snatched him up to bring him to the headquarters. And he meets this guy named Paradox. And I believe Paradox is, this is a, a, a version of Paradox. I'm not sure how, as to how comic accurate he is, but this is a version of a Marvel character called Paradox. And he is one of the heads of a division at the TVA. And basically, he sets uh, Deadpool. He's going to basically use Deadpool as his agent of destruction because it turns out Paradox is not a good dude. But Deadpool refuses. Deadpool gets... Uh, but before Deadpool can refuse, he actually tries to fix things and find a Wolverine because his universe is... Deadpool's universe is set to expire. Because Logan from the previous movie had passed away. And according to the TVA, when a uh, anchor being uh, passes away in a universe, that universe slowly crumbles. And the TVA set this Mr. Paradox guy to be the watcher of this universe and to ensure just watching over its death. And the TVA agents, they can live, I think, for thousands of years. They're immortal, basically. The TVA lives outside of time. And there's no sense of time. Like, I don't think they even age up there. Uh, or wherever they're at. I guess I should watch the rest of Loki to find out. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that, though. Because I don't think I heard good things about Loki Season 2. But, um, yeah. So, with Deadpool... Uh, learning that fact about the anchor being he tries to go on this little trip it's about a five minute to ten minute trip of looking through universes to find another wolverine 
and he is hilarious. You'll you'll have to watch it. But he meets a comic accurate Hugh Jackman Wolverine, which is short and it's hilarious. For a second, he meets a Henry Cavill Wolverine for a second, and then Henry Cavill Wolverine just completely bodies him, a Deadpool through a portal and a, a TVA portal, and uh, Deadpool has to keep looking for a Wolverine, and he. Uh, shows up to a Wolverine from the comics that is fighting the Hulk for the first time because it's the first appearance of Wolverine in the Marvel comics and <laughs> uh Deadpool <laughs> says to Hulk right before Hulk punches him you don't see really see Hulk you kind of see the side of Hulk's face and his uh his huge arm and body and uh <laughs> Deadpool's like no no don't mess with me on Marvel Jesus and as soon as he says that Hulk completely just like socks Deadpool into a uh, oblivion uh, just with one punch and uh, that was hilarious uh Deadpool f uh sorts through several other different uh Wolverines a lot of comic references for sure um really cool really cool moment of the movie and then he stumbles upon a bar in one of the universes and he's using this tva device to get through all the different universes um is that explained not really but i don't really see that as a plot hole because the, it's already been established that this tva agency is extremely overpowered and just crazy technology and everything so you could say technically this lazy writing but i don't really see it as that since it's already been established in uh hours and hours and hours of content from loki season one and two that the tva is absolutely bonkers so i didn't see that as a uh like a lazy way out because this is this is definitely a wacky movie and in a good way, in a comic way. And they lean into that, that this is a comic book movie. We're not trying to be, you know, like grounded like the Dark Knight or anything. And Deadpool is the perfect character to do that with. So he finds this Wolverine that is with Deadpool for the rest of the film. And they go on their hijinks together. And right when he finds this wolverine uh he brings him back to the tva and is like hey uh, i found a wolverine here you go and then the tva guy paradox is like uh you found the worst wolverine actually he failed his universe dipple's like well whatever and then uh paradox uh immediately zaps both of them and sends them to the void which was uh introduced in loki season one where Loki met all of his multiple variants of himself. And for here, we, in the rest of the film, we stay in the void, uh, kind of traveling around and seeing all kinds of different Marvel heroes, Marvel villains. And I feel like, to me, that there is definitely an extended cut that I would be ecstatic to see. Like, because the fight scenes in this movie... The choreography and everything is some of the best I've ever seen, and honestly, the best I've seen in a long time. And yeah, I, I I'll just go ahead and say, since we're this is a spoiler video, uh, it was so cool to see the original Blade again. It was uh, I need to watch the Electro movie and the Daredevil movie. But it was awesome to see a Jennifer Gardner, Electra, and uh, X-23 from the Logan movie. I'm pretty sure that's our X-23 from the Fox universe, the Deadpool universe, you could say. And <clears throat> yeah, this movie has like a good sense of like morals, like Deadpool is fighting for his family because his universe is on the brink of destruction because Logan is dead, his Logan. And he's fighting to keep it alive and trying to work around to see if he can get back to the TVA and fix it somehow. And uh, trying to make Wolverine his friend and Wolverine wants nothing to do with him. 
um, which is a hilarious dynamic. And the the fight scenes that lead up, Deadpool versus Wolverine, they, they fight several times in the movie, and it's hilarious and awesome. More awesome than hilarious, but uh, epic every single time. Uh, and the, yeah, the comedy is on point in this movie. I mean, there's like maybe one line that lands kind of flat at the beginning of the movie, but I don't think any other line lands flat after that. Um, and it's like, a, it's like a weird line. Uh, I won't get into it, but it's just like, you'll notice it. It's, uh, it just, Deadpool starts rambling about something for a second and then immediately stops talking about it to a certain character. Uh, it's the, the fat guy that's, uh, like a hoss looking guy and, uh, Deadpool says a bunch of stuff to him and tells him to shut up and you're just like, okay, how is that funny? I, what? Because he was like, talking about climate change and stuff like that. I, I don't know. But uh, I think all the other lines landed, to be honest with you. And I have the soundtrack in front of me right here. And I'll go ahead and tell you guys which songs stood out to me as, as that I can remember. Because some of these songs I, I don't listen to all the time. So uh, I wouldn't remember them. But they're all right. So <laughs> the greatest show, it, it doesn't play in full. So they're in a van together. And that's why the soundtrack says van jams at one point. And I believe Wolverine is beating Deadpool's head on the radio in the car. And it plays the greatest show for one second. It is. I busted out laughing. I died laughing. So a couple of these songs happen when that happened. And I remember I'm with you with Avril Lavigne. Uh, that was a memorable scene. Bye 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 was at the beginning with Deadpool dancing and killing all the TVA agents. And Iris, the Google Doll, Google Doll song, love that song, played at the perfect moment in the movie. Like you couldn't ask for a more perfect moment to play that song. I forgot when The Power of Love played... Um, and let's see. Looking at the list now. Uh, Good Riddance, Time of Your Life played at the very end uh, when the credits rolled. And that was very sentimental. I'll get into when the credits rolled. And uh, LFG, theme from Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, I don't remember it at the second. But uh, all of the song choices, whether I remember them or not, all were solid and they uh my brother was saying to me some of the songs sounded louder than what he would imagine during the fight scenes it didn't bother me though for some reason i felt like it was mixed pretty well like this the music wasn't too loud over the fighting and that's kind of been like a deadpool movie trope where the fighting would happen the music would happen and then the fighting starts and the music keeps going uh, again, the fight scenes, holy crap, insane. Um, and yeah, uh, and you get a reminder that Deadpool is a murderer. Uh, he murders, murders, uh, let's see, other than a bajillion people on this movie, uh, with the TVA agents, he's just straight up murdering them, right? But that makes sense because they're trying to kill him. But he, he takes out some people that actually aren't trying to take him out, which is surprising. Um, the first example that comes to mind. Okay. So this is a huge spoiler. All right. So Chris Evans is in the movie. Not as Captain America. He's Chris Evans' human torch. <laughs> and we see him very briefly. And Deadpool frames him. Uh, apparently frames uh, Human Torch for saying uh, mean things about the Cassandra Nova, which is uh, Professor X's long-lost twin. And I think we're just supposed to assume that some of these characters are from different universes, and some of these characters are from the Fox universe. So it's not confirmed that Cassandra Nova was from the Fox 
X-Men universe, but it's implied because Logan says to her that he would have tried to find you, which it was a cool emotional moment. But back to Human Torch. Okay. So you kind of know with rated R movies that there's going to be a couple sacrificial lambs to kind of show you that this is an R-rated movie. So, of course, the scene that we all knew, uh, Sabretooth immediately got his head locked off. We saw that coming a million miles away with the trailer. And But the thing we didn't see was Human Torch, uh, Deadpool uh, framed Human Torch. Not really. It turns out that Human Torch did say those things about Cassandra, but it wasn't really that bad. But Cassandra is kind of a hothead, pun, uh, pun intended, and immediately murders uh, Human Torch in front of the people at the Ant-Man Tower. And by stripping away his flesh and blood, so he's just this uh, de-skinned uh, pile of meat that just falls to the ground. Uh, that was brutal. Uh, I was a fan of those Fantastic Four movies. So that is my only complaint for this movie that the Human Torch got brutally murdered because I'm kind of tired of seeing that with Marvel stuff. For example, <clears throat> Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. We saw Reed Richards get brutally murdered. The fan casted Reed Richards get brutally murdered. <laughs> John Krasinski. Uh, we saw uh, a version of Black Bolt get brutally murdered. Professor X got brutally uh, conjoined uh, by Scarlet Witch. Uh, I think Monaco Rambo got destroyed as well. And uh, oh, uh, the female. Captain America, which is, I forgot her name, but it's Becky. Uh, it's Captain America's love interest. But anyway, I'm kind of over seeing superheroes getting brutally murdered. And I feel like that is a trope with multiverses. It's just, oh, it's a multiverse, so we can brutally murder this hero and that hero to show we have stakes. And it's like, no, you're really not showing stakes. You're just showing that you just want to brutally uh, massacre uh, people's favorite heroes, uh, which is not fun. So that's a mini Doctor Strange review. I did not like Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness at all. But that is my only complaint. Literally, my only complaint for this movie is how they treated Johnny Storm from Fantastic Four 1 and 2. Played by Chris Evans. That is my only complaint. Uh, so to get down to this review, there's a ton of different story elements that I missed. But I'll say the most important thing was that Wolverine was wearing his costume. And like I said, it's, it, it, it's taken 24 years to finally see him wear his costume. And right at the moment where you'd expect him to put his mask on. He puts his mask on, which was there the whole time. He's just like, Doo -doo. and his mask was there the whole time. It was just in his neck fold or whatever, in his uh, uh, shoulder pad thing. And he wears it for the rest of the movie. And this is a nitpick for me for superhero movies, but I hate it when superheroes take off their masks constantly, like uh, Tom Holland in Endgame, where there's literally lasers and bullets and machine gun bullets flying through the air everywhere and beams of light and lasers and <laughs> Tom Holland takes off his mask it's like dude what are you doing <laughs> this is a moment to keep on your mask and even more so it's a metal mask so it would protect your freaking skin but that's a nitpick for me like, I'd rather them do it the Sam Raimi way with the first Spider-Man movie where, okay, sure, the, the actor has to sh have his face shown because his agent and the actor uh, has a required amount of screen time for his face. I get that. Sam Raimi did it in a smart way in the fight where 
the Spider-Man's mask would be ripped up. So you would see part of his face and part of the mask. Kind of referencing the time. comic book uh, still frame where you see Peter with half of his face and half of the spider face. So it was kind of symbolic. And giving face time for the actor, which I'm sure is required. But that is a nitpick for me as a superhero fan. I just want to see the characters in their costumes with their masks on. And uh, Wolverine did not have his mask on for most of the film. He only had his mask on for like 15 to 10% of the film. But I will take it because it looked amazing. Uh, and to use an example, it looked exactly like Wolverine from Marvel Ult Ultimate Alliance 2. And which is that's a perfect look for Wolverine. And that's kind of what I've been wanting for the movies to take that as an example. And yeah, so uh, to get down to the end of the movie, uh, there's an epic conclusion. Uh, Wolverine and Deadpool uh, learn to get along, basically. And Deadpool tries to sacrifice himself, but he can't save him. So Wolverine goes in there and they're going to both sacrifice themselves for their universes and all the universes. It ends up being a multi-universal threat with uh, Cassandra Nova. I think that's her last name title, but uh, I know I'm missing a lot of stuff in this movie. I just kind of wanted to wrap up this review, but uh, honestly, go check it out. So my review of it is I'm not even kidding you, even with the Johnny Storm thing, it is a 10 out of 10. It is the best Marvel movie I've seen in a very long time, and I'm not being hyperbolic, like, uh, in my opinion, or dramatic in any way. Like, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, I think I would give it a 9, and this is a 10. So I would change my top three and Avengers Endgame gets kicked off the top three for sure. This is better than Avengers Endgame. It is probably equal to Infinity War because Infinity War is still a perfect movie. So I would say top three films for MCU now for me is Infinity War, Deadpool and Wolverine, and Spider-Man No Way Home. Those are my top three. And soon after is... Endgame, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier's above Endgame, but yeah. Uh, and then Iron Man and the rest. Uh, go check out this movie if you can. Uh, if you want to see it in theaters, go check it out. It's a very good theatrical experience. I saw it in 3D. It's been a while since I've seen a 3D movie, but it had enough 3D elements that it actually looked really sick and cool. Um Again, the choreography was insane. The acting was insane. Uh, even from Johnny Storm, who got brutally murdered. <laughs> I mean, it, it wasn't even funny just because I'm a Johnny Storm fan. If anything, I heard from the crowd that when he got murdered, there was shock. It was like, because <gasps> he just died. He just died immediately. And it's kind of like the sac sacrificial lamb thing to show how powerful Cassandra is. With her powers so uh but yes that is my review for this movie and go check it out and let me know once you guys have seen it what you think about it in the comments below and i will see you guys later